Welcome to the Fit Small Business QuickBooks Online Training Course. In this lesson, we're going to cover how to set up the products and services list in QuickBooks Online. To follow along with me, log into your QuickBooks Online account now or click the link below this video for a free 30-day trial of QuickBooks Online. You can also find a link below this video to our full QuickBooks Online course and other helpful resources. Let's get started. If you invoice customers for products and services sold, or if you need to keep track of inventory costs and quantities, then it's important that you set up the products and services list in QuickBooks Online. Setting up your products and services list will allow you to do a couple things. Quickly create invoices that will automatically populate the quantity, description, and price for the product or service fields on the invoice. It will also allow you to keep track of your sales by product or service. This will allow you to gain insight about what products are selling versus what products are collecting dust on the shelf. For the purposes of this video, we will use a fictitious company called Pulse Plumbing. As you view this video, think about how the information might differ for your business. To begin, after you sign into your QuickBooks Online account, click on the gear icon located to the left of your company name and select Products and Services. From the Products and Services list, we want to click the blue button in the upper right hand corner to create a new product or service item. When you create a new item in QuickBooks, you have three options to choose from. Non-inventory, service, and inventory. Let's start with inventory. The inventory item allows you to track cost and quantity for items that you buy and sell. Setting up inventory items will allow you to keep an eye on the inventory stock level as items are sold. By doing so, you will be able to keep track of when you are running low on an item so that you can place an order with the supplier before you run out. We're going to go ahead and set up a inventory item for Paul called Stainless Steel Faucet. So let's go ahead and select inventory. We'll need to turn on the inventory tracking button here, and then that will take us to the setup screen. In the first field, you want to put the name of the item that you're setting up. If you track your inventory by SKU, then you can enter that information in the SKU field. The category field allows you to categorize inventory items. For example, if you sell t-shirts, then you can set up a t-shirts category and then set up the items that would fall into that category like men's t-shirts, ladies t-shirts, and kids t-shirts. We want to set up the inventory that is currently on hand. So we'll enter that in the next field. And to the right of that, we want to put the effective date of that inventory quantity. The inventory asset account is automatically assigned by QuickBooks. Do not change this account or it could result in inaccurate quantity and cost calculations. In the sales information field, you want to put the description of the item that you want to appear on your customer's invoices and sales receipts. Typically, this will be the same as your item name above, so you can just copy and paste the info in there. The sales price or rate is the amount that you sell the item for. The income account field is the account that you want to track your income for this item. You can click the drop down and select the account from the list. The purchasing information field allows you to put the description of the item that you want to appear on your purchase orders that you send to suppliers when you place orders for this item. Again, this can be exactly the same description that you use for your customers. The cost that you purchased the item for, and then the expense account field is automatically assigned by QuickBooks. It is a cost of goods sold account. Do not change this account or it could result in inaccurate quantity and cost calculations. Last but not least, if you have a picture of the inventory item that you're setting up, there is an area here up at the top where you can actually upload that picture. Once you have completed all of the fields, we are ready to save. Now we'll go back to the products and services list where we should see our new stainless steel faucet. There we go on the list. Perfect. Next, we want to go back to the products and services list and we want to set up a non-inventory item. 
A non-inventory item allows you to track the cost, but not the quantity for items that you buy and sell. For example, Paul purchases a variety of odds and ends, such as nails, glue, and solutions to unclog drains. He does not need to keep track of the quantity, but he does need to keep track of the cost for these items. So he is gonna set up a non-inventory item called Drano. And if you noticed here, all of the fields are pretty identical to the inventory part setup. We've got the name of the item, we've got an SKU field, we can track categories. Um, the sales information will be the description on our customer invoices and sales receipts. Uh, we want to track how much we sell the item for. And again, similar to the inventory part, you are able to select the account that you want to track the income for this item. So simply just click the drop down to the right and select the account that you would like to use to track that income. Last but not least is the expense account field. Unlike the inventory item, this expense account is assigned by you and not by QuickBooks. So just select the drop down arrow and you can select the expense account that you want to keep track of here. If you have a picture of the non-inventory item that you're selling, again, you can also upload that in this screen at the top. We'll go ahead and save our changes and go back to the products and services list to make sure we've got Drano there now. And there it is. Last but not least, we want to set up a service item. So we'll go back to new. Selecting the service item allows you to set up services that you sell to your customers. For example, plumbing services, bookkeeping services, and tax preparation services would fall under this category. In this example, we will set up plumbing services for Paul. In this first field, we'll put plumbing services, which is a description of our item. Again, we've got similar fields to what we've had with the previous two setups. We've got our description that's going to appear on our customer invoices and sales receipts here that we've entered, along with what we're charging the customer for this service and the account that we want to track the income in. So we'll go ahead and save our changes here and we'll go back to the products and services list and make sure plumbing services now appears on our list. And there it is. Perfect. Once you have added all of your products and services, you can run a report to see the entire list. From this screen, there's a run a report button up at the top here. So just click this and then the report will display for the products and services list. Here's our report. The first column shows the name of the product or service. We've got our description, our type of item, the price that we sell the item or service for, the cost that we pay for the service or the item, and the quantity for the inventory part. Be sure to review this report for accuracy. If for some reason you do need to make modifications to a product or service, you are able to do so. So back on the home screen, we'll go ahead and navigate back to the products and services list. So click on the gear icon, products and services. The way to edit an item is to click the arrow to the right of the edit link, and that will open up this screen where we can make any changes that we need to make and then save them. You cannot delete a product or service from QuickBooks once you have used it in a transaction for example, creating an invoice for a customer. This is due to the fact that all transactions are linked to the financial statements. However, if you do have a situation where you no longer need an item that is currently on your product and service list, you can inactivate that item. This simply means that it will no longer appear on the products and services list, but it will still appear in financial reports if used in a transaction. To inactivate an item, we want to click on the drop down arrow to the right of the edit link and select make inactive. Once we do that, this item will no longer appear on the products and services list, but as mentioned previously, it will appear in financial statements. That wraps up the section on how to set up the products and services list in QuickBooks Online. To access this course or any of the others in the series, or for a free 30-day trial of QuickBooks Online, Click the links below this video.